So my name is Kelly Ann, and my grandfather was one of the secretly deported Chinese seamen. Hi, my name is Anne Pearson, and my mum was the daughter of a merchant seaman who was also forcibly deported after the Second World War. And I think the reason why we want to talk to you today is to let you know how much that's affected our families. For every cold case in Britain, when someone's missing, all the articles refer to the families needing closure. Yet here we are, 75 years later, with not an answer to be had. And our parents have spent their entire lives not even knowing if the parents lived or died after they were deported. Obviously China was in a civil war. So I think it's important that people understand that we're going to keep at this till we get closure for our families. Um, not long after the first deportations, my dad arrived in an orphanage and he spent the next nine or ten years there before he was returned to Liverpool. So I think spending your formative years in an orphanage obviously has a direct impact on how you feel when you grow up. You know, the, the mistrust that my dad must feel to the system and everybody else around him. He's not very outgoing, he's not very sociable. I think it's impacted him in a million ways that maybe I can't even identify because I'm just used to seeing him quite quiet and withdrawn. He's been like that his whole life. Sadly, I think that my mum had a slightly better option and a better life because she didn't go into an orphanage, but she was given up by her mother and she was adopted by her grandparents. Um, she suffered racism, as we all have. Um, it was after the Second World War, so there was no benefits, no kind of help, and they really struggled financially. And so that was just the immediate impact of being left without a husband, because all the children, was, most of the children, was given up and put into care. Um, and yeah, there wasn't very much money, and it's had an impact on their full life, suffering the racism like we have, and we're the next generation. So I can only imagine how much worse it was for our parents and our grandmas when they found themselves on their own uh, with a mixed race child and the stigma of that in the Second World War um, and being so poor. So the impact, that was immediate, but it carries on throughout the years. So we have no Chinese culture, no Chinese heritage. Um, and that's part of the journey, really, is to find that culture. Yeah, it was very inhumane. And the fact that we've got a government report, it seemed to just bypass the MPs entirely. When we say we want to know what happened to our grandfathers, we don't mean we want a document telling us that they were racist. We mean, where are they? Literally. We mean, what <laughs> happened to them? We mean, did they even survive? I'm not interested in what policies fed into it. I didn't need to wait 50 years to be told it was a racist government decision. We were quite clear on that right from the beginning. What we wanted the report to find out was what was the impact on families? How many half Chinese children went into care in the years of these deportations? You know, they, they, they've made no effort to find the wider families of these seamen. And the only reason why you're talking to us today is because we are families that have come forwards. How many other families don't even know that this is part of their history because they were brought up in care, adopted, in orphanages. And this, this event has been far-reaching and it's affected not just the generation that were deported, but all the generations that come after it. Um, I think the apology, the apology is important for the old generations, especially the people that have had their answers, um, and we know a couple of those, and that's very important to them, and we completely support them and fully back them. Um, and yet, it is important. However, what we want are photographs of our granddads to give our parents. They want to know actual factual answers. Did they survive? Where did they end up? Do we have any other family? And we're not all from Liverpool because when the men were deported, wherever those ladies came from, that's where they went back to. So in my case, my grandma went back to Manchester because that's where she came from. We're also discovering families that went back to Luton 
um, and up north, so it's not just in Liverpool. Buckinghamshire, Blackpool, we're all over Britain now, this isn't just a Liverpool incident mm. where we do feel the MPs involved are trying to keep it within Liverpool, but I mean, this is right across the country and it affects hundreds and hundreds of us. And to me, a forced apology means nothing. If we've got to campaign to make them say sorry, do I for one minute believe that they are sorry? No, I don't. They've just done the same thing to the Windrush generation. Apologies mean nothing to my generation, but to the likes of Peter, who's campaigned to get a report done and he knows what happened to his father, then for that percentage of people, it will bring them the closure that they need. So for that reason alone, we support them seeking an apology. But for us, we want the real answers. When we say what happened to our granddads, we do not mean, what did your policy say? You know, we would genuinely want to know, did he live? Did he die? Who and on, was it? On the back of that as well, just to add, um, some people will get answers, some people won't. So the most important thing in all this is the counselling and the therapy for the older generations to give them some peace of mind. They might not get the answers they're looking for. So they need some kind of closure and peace of mind. They're very old, they're nearly 80. They deserve to have that. And it's an absolute outcry that it's been hidden for so long and they're not being given the validation and the support and the answers that they're looking for. They're nearly 80 years old. At what point uh, is the government or MPs going to all work together and try and help us? They didn't do that with the wives. They let the wives die, believing they'd have been abandoned. And it very much seems to me we're waiting for the children to die. We will not allow that to happen, will we? I think one of the reasons why me and Anne are forefront in looking for answers at the minute is because we're sick to death of all of our old people being brought out to drag up this trauma, tell another TV crew how bad it was, and get another ah uh, and a pat on the back. And that they actually do need to speak to people who are going to give them correct answers, be that a therapist, a counsellor, whatever. But this has brought too much trauma to just be left. We're not just a sad historic story. We're all still here. And we're also safeguarding the families. Because the um, files have been released 20 years ago, there's been lots of researchers before us. Um, and what has happened actually is that the families have been used for research and been used for financial gain. Uh, me and Kellyanne can see that very clearly with the younger generation. We will not tolerate that. We will not allow that to happen. We're here to safeguard them. They're vulnerable. Some of them have cognition problems. So that's why we formed the group. So we will get the answers and we will safeguard the families from future people that come along that want to just make their living off telling their story with no help and no results for the families at the end of the day.